Hello again, and welcome to my uh, slideshow on the physiology of sex. This is Dr. James Camp at Lee College in Baytown, Texas. All right, uh, there are two unique physiologies that we talk about in terms of uh, the sexual response in the reproductive system. The first is that there's a unique tissue type here called erectile tissue. Most functional tissues that we've seen in the body have to do with some sort of muscle tissue, okay? Um, smooth muscles or skeletal muscles or something like that. The change in size and shape of the reproductive organs mostly has to do with erectile tissue instead. Where is this located in males? Well, I think that's pretty obvious that's going to be the penis. Where is it located in females? That's a little less obvious. Um, the clitoris is obviously the part of the female that is you know, most homologous to the penis, but there are also these things on either side of the labia called the vestibular bulbs that uh, become erect during sexual activity. Okay, so what does erectile tissue do and how is it different from other functional tissues? Um, erectile tissue, first off, let's find it, find it, okay. Um, in the female, um, well, first off, there are two types, um, and it's most obvious to explain the two types in a male. So there are cavernous tissues, um, which are the more rigid type, and there are spongy tissues, which are the less rigid, more, well, spongy type. Um, in a male penis, the two corpor corpora cavernosa are the cavernous type, and the spongy corpus spongiosum and the bulb of the penis and the glands of the penis are all the spongy type. Now, if you happen to have a penis or know someone who does who will let you uh, play around with their penis, um, you can get it erect and you can feel that the top side of the penis is more rigid than the bottom side, which is a little bit more squishy. So that will give you an idea of the difference between a cavernous and a spongy tissue. Um, the female has cavernous and spongy tissues as well. Um, the cavernous tissues are the cruse of the clitoris, which spreads out on either side of the, um, the labia far to the side. Uh, the spongy tissues are uh, the glands of the clitoris and the vestibular bulbs, which swell up. All right, and um, erectile tissue, how does it work? The uh, Tissue is made of tiny spaces that by themselves have little or no shape or substance. They're called flaccid or detumescent. Uh, the, uh, you can think of it as being like if you took a bunch of empty water balloons and tied them together, um, you'd have a, a flexible, floppy, flaccid substance. As the space is filled with blood, um, vasodilation occurs during... Uh, the uh, erection process, um, as the space is filled with blood, they swell to a defined shape and harden. They become erect or tumescent. Um, here, we've filled the water balloons with water, and so each water balloon by itself is a little bit rigid, and if you tie a whole bunch of them together, they kind of form a, a rigid structure. So the parasympathetic nervous system is stimulated. That releases nitric oxide, believe it or not, same stuff they give you at the dentist to make you kind of silly. Um, that leads to vasodilation, and so blood fills all of these um, spaces, and as the blood fills these spaces, the tissue swells and hardens. Um, when the sympathetic nervous system is stimulated for a long enough time, vasoconstriction occurs, and Uh, blood leaves the tissue and it flaccidates or detumesces again.
All right, the other unique physiology of the, uh, the human sexual response is the sexual response cycle itself. Uh, now, sexual response is governed by the uh, autonomic nervous system, which means that contrary to popular belief, a person has no conscious control over their sexual response, either to another person or a situation or algebra class or anything. Um, as, as many a teenage boy going through adolescence has learned, you can get an uncomfortable erection in the middle of algebra class and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, in fact, most of the sexual response comes down to a series of spinal reflexes. Um, sexual response can, however, uh, be initiated by a variety of stimuli. Tactile, that is touching your sexual organs or any other part of your body sometimes, um, audio-visual, um, watching or listening to sexy things, um, or even mental psychological. You can have a daydream that initiates a sexual response. Um, finally, there is a three or four stage sexual response cycle. We begin with arousal. Um, then some people say there is a uh, phase called plateau that uh, is distinct from arousal. Other people say it's just a continuous cycle of arousal and arousal and arousal until you skip over the plateau stage and get straight to uh, climax. And then climax leads us ultimately to uh, resolution. Okay. What type of nerves regulate that cycle? Um, parasympathetic nerves though we usually associate them with being relaxed, parasympathetic nerves actually initiate the sexual response cycle and sympathetic nerves resolve it. Okay, here's how this looks in a male. The parasympathetic uh, leads to uh, vasodilation and uh, that leads to erection. And then in the male, you really can make a case that a plateau is just a continuation of the arousal phase and that this continues for some amount of time. Then uh, a series of sexual uh, reflexes go on in the male that take you through several stages of climax or orgasm. We'll look at that in a little more detail. So um, remember the pelvic nerves are sympathetic nerves, so, or parasympathetic nerves, sorry. The pelvic nerves are parasympathetic nerves they start by exciting the penis. The penis becomes erect. Okay, the bulbal urethral gland secretes fluid uh, to get the penis ready for intercourse, but not uh, nothing related to ejaculation yet. As stimulation continues, um, the uh, the only place where this happens in the entire body. Uh, control switches from parasympathetic to sympathetic and now sympathetic nerves from the lumbar region of the spinal cord start to stimulate what's called emission that is the sperm start traveling up the ductus deferens into the prostate gland the prostate secretes its fluid the seminal vesicles secrete their fluid uh, the presence of semen in the urethra sends signals back up to the 
spinal cord and here a reflex takes over that begins to uh, release additional prostatic secretions and we even get some somatic muscle activity here the bulbocavernosus muscle starts to contract and at this point semen is ejaculated from the, uh, the penis. Then sympathetic signals continue but at this point they constrict the arteries and the penis becomes flaccid or detumescent. And at this point, the sympathetic nervous system enforces something called a refractory period. The man has a period of time between a few minutes to a few hours, depending on you know, how old you are, the older you are, the longer your refractory period. Um, as a period of time during which he cannot get erect again, cannot have another sexual response cycle. Okay, the female has the same idea, but uh, there are a couple of differences. The first is that um, the parasympathetic phase blends slowly into a sympathetic phase through a a long plateau that has a slow sl switch over to sympathetic control of the body. The heart rate increases, the blood pressure increases, the respiratory rate and muscle tension all increase. The woman just becomes more and more physically excited. Um, but before that can happen, we have the parasympathetic stuff. The vasodilation leads to erection of the clitoris and lubrication of the vagina. Ultimately, when full sympathetic control takes over, um, we have an orgasm, rhythmic muscle contractions, giant release of dopamine in the brain. Where this changes from the male is that the sympathetic nervous system then hands control back to parasympathetic, and parasympathetic can uh, direct us right back into another excitement phase, and we can have um, this whole thing become cyclical and have multiple orgasms. So here's the picture of how this works in a female. Um, the um, excitement causes the uh, you know uh, stimulation causes excitement, causes parasympathetic nerves to, to take over. The uterus actually becomes erect itself. Um, the labium become uh, become uh, the, the vestibular bulbs in the labia become erect. The clitoris becomes erect and the vagina itself becomes more lubricated. Um, during plateau phase, all of this continues, um, and the orgasmic platform, the, the vagina, um, kind of grabs onto the penis. Um, then when we switch over to orgasm, um, the muscles all around here contract rhythmically, and uh, it is possible that the male ejaculates at the same time that the cervix can actually scoop up the semen and the uterus can use peristalsis to pull that semen up into the uterus and toward the uh, toward the fallopian tubes where the eggs are waiting. Um, then we hand this back over to the parasympathetic, the uterus returns to its original position, everything relaxes unless we continue stimulation and then again this whole thing can can happen over and over and over again okay come to class next time for the exciting conclusion of the reproductive system do you want to build a fetus okay have a good night thank you